Hi everybody, it's the end of the month so it's time to show you all the pages I coloured during June of 2024. We're going to start with this one, this is A Million Sea Creatures by Lulu Mayo and this was as I said at the beginning of the month, the first one I coloured and it was when I first got my set of acrylic markers from B&M, my cheap set of acrylic markers. So I was still playing around with those and I picked a picture from this book because they're quite simple pictures but I figured there was scope to use a lot of different colours on them and they'd be really fun and cheerful when I finished with them. So the picture I picked is this one here this little crab and as you can see I went a little bit crazy with my colors tried to use all of them from the pack of pens there just keeping the shading really simple with the two different colors that were on each pen I did try a little bit of blending with my shading down here on this pale orange I'm kind of getting the hang of that a little bit more but I do like it when the shading is a lot more graphic here like we have going on on the actual crab I, I quite like that so uh, yeah <laughs> more playing around with those is in order I think I'll bring him up a little bit closer because he is a small picture and we do have a little bit of glare going on from our lamps so there we go just a little quick one to start the month off there I did go around all the line art of the picture once I'd finished with the silver gel pen. So yeah, that's another reason for trying to keep it simple because I did go around all the line art once I'd finished to give it that little bit of sparkle. Maybe a little bit too much sparkle because he is glaring a lot in the lamps here. But yeah, I think he's looking really fun. I do love all these different kind of candy colours we've got going on. And these bubbles, they were already there in the background. I just went over those with the silver gel pen, the same as all the rest of the line art. I love this little kind of brown cat we've got going on here. A little bit of dollar colour there, but he does show up really nicely. And yeah, super cute. That one is from Lulu Mayo, A Million Sea Creatures. Next we're moving on to Colouring Heaven. This is a colourful adventure storybook special by Jash Lee. And a little bit of explanation before I actually go on and show you this one. This one is actually a storybook as the title says and it follows the adventures of this girl here who is an artist and she ends up getting shipwrecked onto an island. She finds this wolf here, she makes friends with the wolf. And when I showed this one to my son when it first came out he said oh she's an artist and she likes wolves so she must be you because I like wolves, they're my favourite animal. So what I've been doing with this one so far is colouring the girl to look like me, adding in a bit of glasses, giving her the purple hair to keep that theme running through. And also I've been given the challenge of adding a little bumblebee to each picture, which also fits in with my theme of bees for the month. So I thought that might, might be quite fun to do. And the one that I've picked to do is this one here. And there we go. And as you can see, I've added in the glasses there to make it look more like me. I've given her the purple hair. And you can see my little bee there that I actually cut out, cut out and collaged in there, the little bee on the top. I've put onto one of the sea monster's tentacles. And I have replaced the background of this one um, with a picture from a book. This is a picture with a thunderstorm going on. Originally, I was going to do just a normal sky, just a normal blue sky there. Um, but I ended up finding this picture and I thought that would be awesome because at this part of the story she is supposed to actually be in a lightning storm with that happening all around her but unfortunately I had already coloured this octopus pink <laughs> I seem to have a thing for pink octopuses I had already coloured him pink so what I did to make him fit in with this picture I picked out for the background there is just go over that with a yellow to make him into a more orangey kind of colour and fit in more with the colour scheme I had going on. Also the colour I picked for her top didn't actually fit once I'd put in the orange for the background. We might be able to see that. If I flip over, yeah, this kind of tone, kind of stone tone I think it was called. Um, sandstone or something like that I had going on with her top that didn't fit in with the rest of the colours so what I did for that one is I took some scrap paper some scrapbook paper rather and I cut out the shape of her top um, made sure I drew all the outlines cut that out stuck that on just shaded it with a little bit of marker there and that fitted in quite nicely I did end up having to draw in her necklace because she did have the necklace going on there I had to add that in again over the top a little bit of gold gel pen I think I've also used the gold to go around these markings on the octopus or kraken he's supposed to be a sea monster probably a kraken right yeah there's some white gel pen to go around the outlines of these um, clouds I think these were and this was the wave foam here I think I've got that right it was a bit hard to tell actually but these bits I coloured as clouds and then these bits as the water here and then with the white gel pen I tried to add in if I can get those on camera these drips coming down from the actual octopus or kraken to make him look as if he is coming out from the water with all the water dripping down from him there so yeah quite happy with how that one's turned out I'll try and bring her in a little bit closely. I don't think there's that many details to be seen, but we'll come in pretty close there anyway. There's our little bee in the top corner there. 
See the purple hair, the glasses. I've gone in with the gold gel pen. There's my collage in for a top there. And yeah, the rest just mark a base with the pencil shading over the top. Bit of collage and yeah, super happy with how she's turned out. I, I do want to work on this one a lot more because my son wants me to actually finish it. Um, with the, yeah, with keeping on with the theme we've got going on, trying to put a B on every page. I'm not sure if I will draw them or stick them on or, but yeah, I really do want to finish this one. And uh, I was happy to get a page coloured in there. I have actually skipped a few. I was going in order, but I skipped a few because there was a lot of just a, a seascape with loads of water. I didn't really want to colour, but that one was quite fun to do. That is from a colourful adventure storybook special Coring Heaven by Josh Lee. Next we're moving on to Jasmine Beckett Griffith, the fantasy art adventure colouring book and this is one that I made a video of on the channel where I showed you how I replaced the background of a colouring book page, replaced the whole background with a page from a book. This page is actually from a tourist book, a kind of um, travel book there, information about England I think we've got going on there but it seemed to fit in quite nicely and I actually coloured the lady before I picked the background which made my life a little bit more difficult for this one but I think she's worked out really well. She's coloured with just a marker base and then pencil shading on the top. There's a bit of glitter gel pen that I used for her belts here to make them look kind of shiny like patent leather was the idea I was going for there. Um, I think silver glitter gel pen for the metal of her sword and um, it could be gold gel pen for the patterns on her on her kind of skirt thing and I'm not exactly sure what it is on her kind of skirt. There's some gold and silver gel pens. I've stuck on some stick on crystals um, both for her plait there for her braid and one for a bindi on her forehead there. I'm not sure if that's the right place for it to go but yeah that's a bindi on her forehead there. And I'll bring her in a little bit closer. There we go. You can see we've got the little um, fancy crystal there on her forehead. We've got the little ones for her, for her braid. Um, for her top, I did a layer of the alcohol marker and then I dabbed it with the hand cleanser gel to try and get a little bit of a leather texture going on. And then I went on top with a white pencil and a black pencil just to make it look a little bit more rougher as well. She did end up with a bit of a battle scar there because the, the hand gel went over onto her skin and I couldn't make that blend into the rest of her skin. So she's been swashbuckling a bit and she's got a little bit of a battle scar going on, which I think looks really cool. Um, I did end up giving her some little bees as tattoos because yeah I don't have that many pictures with actual bees on them so I, I was actually putting bees into the pictures I was doing which was kind of a fun way to go about it I think and um, I think the tattoos fitted in quite well because she does have a few more of the tattoos going on there there we go that's the rest of our little lady there and I think the one part that I wasn't happy about in the actual video was this part here where the sea foam on the photograph in the background was blending in with her sleeve of her top. So what I ended up doing off camera, I think on camera I went around the outline here with a biro just to strengthen that black line. And I think off camera I shaded it a bit with a pencil as well. Um, that was a uh, Castle Arts of Terra Verde kind of desaturated sort of green colour which I thought would work as a shadow there behind her and it does separate her top from the sea so I was quite happy with that once I'd done that if I had to say one part I wasn't totally happy with it would be that one and I can see now I've forgotten to colour the top <laughs> on her hip flask um yeah there's actually no colour on that I should go ahead and uh, colour that with the silver I think um but that is just white paper never mind overall I'm quite happy with her how she's turned out it is quite a fun technique to just replace the background with a photo there like we've done it is really scary yeah I will admit it's scary just chopping into your colouring books and it's a little bit fiddly trying to get it all lined up to to look kind of a level to get the picture in the right place when you fold everything back over but I think if, if you do get it right then it's a really good effect and yeah something I do like to do so there we go that's Captain Molly Morgan from Jasmine Beckett Griffith colouring book next we're moving on to Wildflower Folk by Christine Caron and for this one I did actually want to try out one of Christine's kind of tutorials or videos where she makes a skin tone, a nice dark skin tone just using three coloured pencils and uh, I wanted to try out that tutorial so I got out this book and I flipped through and I found a picture that I wanted to try that on but when I went back to her channel afterwards to find the video there was actually a speed colour of the picture that I'd picked out so I thought instead of trying to do the skin tutorial I would try and follow the speed colour of the picture I'd picked out and the picture I picked out is this one here 
And yeah, it was quite hard to try and follow that speed colour, even if I slowed it right the way down. So yeah, it will be looking a little bit different from, from Christine Karen's actual artwork. If anybody does know this artwork or they've looked it up, it does look slightly different. The background I'm quite happy with eventually, because as with most pictures, it did go through a really ugly stage. When I first put the watercolour down and just done a wash over her hair and her face, it was just looking really bad. And I was in two minds whether to actually carry on with it, but I did. I carried on watching the video and I tried to get my pencil shading around about the same but it was so hard to try and follow the video in the end I think I just picked out a few colours of pencils and tried to do something along the same lines using the same colours and I think it's worked out really really well I think I've got the same kind of glow effect that she had going on in her original artwork that worked really well. I think I ended up going in with black pencil and adding a little bit kind of extra boost to this shadow behind her hair to emphasize that glow, really make the yellow and the white stand out. I think in her original artwork, she'd used a um, very pale yellow for these highlights around this kind of lock of hair here, but I didn't have anything that would work for that. I do have a yellow paint pen, but it was, yeah, a little bit too wide, I think. So yeah, I went with the white gel pen, which I thought would work, and I think it has. I'm really happy with the way that kind of light effect is working. I do love the kind of watercolor effects we've got going on in the background. I have been told what they are, what they're called, but I can never remember these kind of um, effects where the colors meet together and don't quite mix. I do love those effects. I did end up sticking on a sticker of a little bee onto this one because again there's no bees in the picture so I was adding in my own little bees. I think he does fit in. Um, he's kind of barely noticeable I think which is a good thing. He's not taking attention away from the picture but he's there in the corner we have our little bee. I'll come in for a close-up. There we go, I'll try and show the effects we've got going on in the background there. I do love these watercolour kind of effects. I did end up splashing some paint just with a paintbrush as well, just to give some nice speckle effects going on. And the colours are kind of blending into each other there. Yep, there we go, that's more focused. I am still practising trying to give you these close-ups so you can see the detail. So apologies if any of my zooming in and out is a little bit wonky. I do apologise for that. I am trying, but there's the detail. I did end up giving my lady a little beauty mark there because it seemed to suit her. It might have been a speck of pink on there that I was covering up. I can't remember, but it does seem to suit her. And um, yeah, these effects in the background, I do love how they've turned out. Completely different from Christine Karen's own original artwork, as some of you will probably be able to tell. But yeah, I am super happy with how that has actually turned out. And yeah, it was a fun one to do. I had to push myself to get through the through the ugly stage and carry on working on it. But yeah, really happy with the final result. I think I've got the same kind kind of effect as Christine Karen, if not the same exact shading and stuff. So, yep, there's that one. That is from the Wildflower Folk book by Christine Karen. Next, we're going back to another coloring heaven. This is the Manga Fairy Special by Stenera or Stenera. I'm not exactly sure how to say that name, but yeah, we've got a name on the, on the cover there. And the one that I picked from here does actually have a bumblebee theme or a honeybee theme, maybe. So yeah, I did have very few pictures that actually had bees in them. This one is quite a small one, so I'll have to be zooming in or lifting her up, I think. But there we go. Um, this one is a marker base for most of it, apart from the background. You can see there, there's a marker base for most of the fairy there. I wanted to make her costume kind of bumblebee, yellow and black colours. With a little bit of white, because they do have a little fluffy bum there, little bumblebees, um, to bring in the white. I wanted to make their wings kind of sort of matching, so I'll give them the same sort of colours for their wings. Um, the background is metallic watercolour. Not sure, yeah, we can make those shine in the light. There's metallic watercolours there. I think I used maybe a purple for the very bottom and then maybe a dark, a medium and a very light pink to blend up there and give us a nice kind of ombre sort of effect in the background, uh, gradient. I'm not sure of the exact word, but yeah, there we go. I'll bring her in for the, for the close up. There we are, there we are, close up with her. We can see that here, yeah, the, the metallic effect of that paint in the background there. I also went around the edges of the wings with the silver gel pen, silver glitter gel pen for the fairy and for the bees to try and make those sort of matching. I was really happy with the effect I ended up with on her wings because, yeah, I wasn't sure exactly what I was doing. And yeah, this one was shaded with Crayolas. I didn't mention that this one was shaded with Crayola pencils on top of the uh, marker base. 
which has worked really well. But yeah, about the wings, I didn't know what I was doing. So I just started in with a dark blue and ended up getting these kind of circle marks going on for some reason. And I just kind of ran with that and played with it, brought in some lighter blue and maybe a little bit of pink to kind of echo what's going on in the background. And uh, yeah, carried on giving it this sort of um, kind of a semi bouquet effect, maybe on her wings. I think it's worked really super well. So yeah, really happy with that. I've used white gel pen to outline this kind of ruffle around the sleeves of her dress. Tried to give it a kind of uh, lacy effect with the dots with the white gel pen there. I've added in some, some stick on crystals. Yeah, we can get those glittering there on this part of the frame and the top part as well. These bits up here because there was kind of circle-y sort of designs. This one shifted a little bit. They were kind of circle-y designs that I wasn't exactly sure what to do with so I stuck on some crystals, some kind of yellow crystals and I think those have worked really well. And yeah, pretty simple one that one I suppose. No fancy uh, techniques or anything. Just markers, the Creole pencils and the metallic watercolour. But I'm pretty happy with how she's turned out. I think she looks really pretty. I I tried to make her hair look uh, a kind of a honey colour. I'm not exactly sure that I've got that completely right. But she looks really pretty anyway. So yeah, that's the one that I coloured from the Manga Fairy special. Next, we're moving on to the Pop Manga Colouring Book. This is by Camilla de Erico. And for this one, I set myself a little challenge because while I was spring cleaning and cleaning out the front room, I came across my son's old art tin, <laughs> his childhood kind of pens and pencils, his art supplies he used when he was smaller, kind of tucked away in a cupboard. And I thought that I could maybe try to use those to colour in a page <laughs> and make a video. So that's what I did. And everything I've used on this page, apart from the white gel pen, was out of the art tin. And I think it's worked really well. I think the main bulk of it is by using the felted pens, scribbling onto a palette and then using them as watercolour. I used that to base the whole picture. I did the the figure itself um, first before I did the background but I based it all with the pens um, diluted with water and then I went in with crayons and with pencils her hair is just crayon I didn't base that I just went in with the crayons straight away and I did learn quite a lot about <laughs> coloring with crayons doing that so that's something I, I yeah I will try again in the future I did shade on her face her skin here with crayons and I tried blending that with a burnisher pencil because I don't have a blender pencil right now I still don't um, but I blended it with a burnisher pencil to give a smoother kind of look to that there which worked a lot which worked really well I think I ended up giving her blue freckles because there was a lot of crayon dust the crayons were making a lot of shavings or sort of dust onto the paper and when I brushed them away which is a habit yeah I know I should get out of but I tend to brush away like eraser shavings or um, things like that and it made marks on her skin so I ended up giving her blue freckles which I think looks really cute I did go in with the pencils here some of the pencils from the tin to give a kind of fur effect onto this sort of fantasy fox creature we have here on her hat headdress <laughs> um what else yeah i use the pencils for the suckers on the octopus again pink octopus i do have a thing for pink octopuses octopi um yeah the white gel pen i used to go around a few of the the bits like this uh, the bee's wings to give a kind of um lacy effect to that fabric there i'll bring us in a little bit closer Hopefully the colours will show up. Um, yeah, I tried to make this look a little bit lacy by doing a very light wash of the pen and then putting some little dots um, with the white gel pen there to make it look a little bit lacy. I've given the bee a sort of fluffy look with the white gel pen there as well. Um, there's the fur effect we managed to get for this fox creature here just by going on top of the pen um, with some a couple of different shades of orange pencil if I remember right. And her hair is just crayons. You know, three different shades of blue was the three i think there was three <laughs> and that was super fun i'm not sure how well that's showing up but it is really bright in real life that is really bright that crayon the background i did by um again putting the pens onto the palette and then turning them into watercolor with a little bit of water and uh, painting them on there try to get a bit of a galaxy effect going on it's a little bit of a muted galaxy i think a little bit pastel but i think it works i think it works as a background and it does go in with our color palette with the blue and the pink um just using the purple in the background that really focuses onto the fox there being that nice orange color so yeah quite happy with how that's worked again i used the white gel pen to add in a few stars i think i splashed some <laughs> some paint or ink onto the 
background as well just by using the damp paintbrush picking up the color and splashing it on I tried that that's worked quite well and all in all yeah she was really fun it was a bit of a challenge especially trying to find some pencils in that tin that actually had enough pigment in them to do anything with but we did find some so it did end up working out pretty well and yeah that's a video on the channel if anybody is interested in that coloring a page with my son's old art tin <laughs> and that is from Camilla de Erico pop manga coloring book Next, we're moving on to our real-time colouring that we did this month, or a kind of colour along, my version of a colour along. This is from Garden Lady by Lana Green. And the lady that we did is this one here, because she does have a little bee there in the picture. I'm not sure how well those colours will be showing up. They are pretty pale, but hopefully they will be showing up. Um, this is the one that we coloured all on camera, this one. And I was really happy with how that turned out. Um, as you can see, I did deviate a little bit from the inspiration illustration over here, the original art. I used this purple instead of the blue that we have going on there. And I've used washi tape for these ribbons that we have in our arms because I found, managed to find some bee-themed washi tapes while I was out one day. Um, and these are two of them. This one does have a slight honeycomb pattern to it. This one has little sunflowers. We'll see those when I lift it up for a little bit of a close-up. Um, and yeah, it was a little bit of an experiment, this one, because I did try to make the skin colour the same as we have going on here with Lana's illustration. So I ended up using pink and yellow and purple in her skin, which are not colours that I usually use too much in skin, but I think it has worked really well. And with the yellow of the lemons, that has worked as a contrast, so it, it seems to have worked really well. Um, the blossoms, I kept the same colour as over here, because I presume that's the colour that lemon blossoms are. I don't know, I haven't really seen any in real life. And her hair, yeah, that was um, not the way I colour blonde hair either. I tried to use grey and yellow to try and get something similar to what we had going on the other side. And I think we've kind of, yeah, we've kind of got something similar going on there, I think, if not quite the same. The background I tried to replicate as well. Oh, bookmark, yeah. <laughs> um, the background I tried to replicate as well, even though I added in a few white gel pen sparkles as well. And this was done with a chalk pastel and then going onto the top with a pencil. And this was all done with the Black Widow pencils, the three sets of Black Widows that I have. So, yeah, I'll lift you up for a little bit of a close up, kind of an angle, so it might be a little bit difficult, but yeah, there we go. You can see that uh, chalk pastel in the background there, our little sparkles and a little white gel pen we added for a little bit of our own sparkles, a little bee. One of the few pictures I do have with bees in them. And hopefully those lemons are not looking too orange on camera. Um, they have a tendency to look like a bright orange. And the honeycomb, there we go, we can see the honeycomb pattern on that orange washi tape there. Or honey colour rather than orange. And the sunflowers. Yeah, there we go. That's the lady that we did for our little bit of real time colouring this month, and it was super fun. I do love Lana Green. <laughs> You're probably getting a bit fed up of hearing me say that, but I do love Lana Green, and this book is absolutely gorgeous. I have started another one in here, which I did mark so I could show you. I did show it really quickly in my uh, colouring video, but this is the other one that I've started in here. Again, with Black Widow pencils to check how they worked on the paper. And I'm really happy with how she's turning out as well. Again, I think her skin is a slightly different colour than the other side, but it's near enough, I think. I'm going to try and copy the same colours over there, see if I can get this honey colour hair going on. She's coming along quite nicely, so I will go ahead and finish her at some point. So yeah, that is from Garden Lady by Lana Green. Next, we're moving on to Moon Valley by Maria Troller or Trolley. I'm not entirely sure how to pronounce that one either. Um, and this one we did to test out the Crayola Swirl pencils. I've got two marked in this book. I'll try and find the right one. Yep, there we go. This is the one we did to try and try out the Crayola Swirl pencils, which I have here still. <laughs> yep, the Crayola Swirl pencils. Those are what we used for that one. Just as a little bit of an experiment to see how they actually worked. And we did end up with a quite nice bright rainbow kind of effect picture going on. Although I would recommend these pencils more for a pattern or a mandala rather than a, a serious picture, like a portrait or realistic flowers or something, because you do tend to get this rainbow effect going on it's quite hard to control the color you do have coming through the pencil I think we did actually make it work though and I tried to test every single pencil on this picture I ended up using all of them which is why it's yeah really rainbow looking we're really cheerful I will say that and it was really fun to do 
I did end up drawing a frame around this one and giving it a black background to make those colours, try and make the colours stand out a little bit more. And that was just done with the acrylic marker, the acrylic brush pen. Uh, I only did the one coat because the paper was starting to not like it very much and the nib of the pen was starting to get a little bit fluffy so I just left it with the one layer. It does give the effect I was wanting though with the colours really standing out from that black background. I did end up going around with the white gel pen as well. Let's come in right close up. I went in with the white gel pen as well around the edges of all the flowers and leaves just to again make them stand out from that black background which I think has worked quite well. I used a gold gel pen for some spots on these these little blossoms here in the middle ones just because why not we were having fun with it so I thought yeah I'll go ahead and do that. There we go and there's that little cat sleeping at the bottom with the flowers and yeah pretty much all I used with those Crayola Swirl pencils. You can pretty much only use one layer with them, I think I've found. Unless anybody else has any other tips, uh, tips or tricks for using those. I found that you can really only use one layer of them. Otherwise, if you start going over and over with the same pencil, the colour changes. It starts to get a little bit muddy. The colours are mixing together. So yeah, I would recommend just one layer and maybe for a pattern or a mandala, I think. Although I'm quite happy with how our pictures turned out. I think we did manage to get a nice rainbow effect there. There we go. That one is from Moon Valley by Maria Troller. Or Troller. And last but not least, we have Mythographic Magical Earth. And there we go. And this one has been a whip for quite a while. And I know, I know, I did say that I would work on it on camera, but things haven't worked out for me to be able to do that on camera. People have been around, there's been work going on outside. Things haven't been going my way. So I've actually worked on it off camera. And this is what it looked like before. This will probably be a screenshot from my work in progress video because I forgot to take a photo of it before I actually started working on it. But there we go, that's how I started with it this month. Quite a lot of it was done if I remember right. I know I'd done most of the sky and the lanterns, um, the, the grass on the ground and the rocks and some of the tortoise if I remember right. So there wasn't really a lot that I had to go in and finish. But this is what we've ended up with. I can open this one up on the white page. Here we go, here's our finished picture. And it seems to be looking a little bit paler than it is in real life, but I will adjust those colours in editing. There we go. That's what we've ended up with. And he was really fun to finish. The pictures in this book, though, they are really, really finely detailed. Um, if anybody has any of the mythographic books, this is Joseph Kattenbang. And uh, yeah, the page is super detailed. So I think if I do go... Um, ahead and colour any more in this book I will be using alcohol markers in the background because for this one it's just, just pencil apart from some washi tape I use for this dress here um, it's just pencil I do like to mix my pencils so I did go ahead and mix my pencils for this one and I do love the effect that we've ended up with it was kind of difficult to keep my lighting <laughs> kind of figured out because we have so many different lanterns here and all the lighting but I have tried to make it so the main bit is this bit here inside the tortoise shell so these flowers are really bright and the girl is really bright to make that the focus of the picture that's where the main bit of lighting is or that's what I tried to do anyway and I made these flowers really quite bright to, to again draw eyes to the middle of that picture there I did add some stick on crystals just for the centres of these flowers. Don't know if they, we can get those sparkling, maybe when we bring it up close. But yeah, I'm really super happy with how he's turned out. It did take a long time. It did take quite a while to colour in, but I think it was really worth it. I'll just bring him up close. So you can see a few more details there. The colours are probably looking a bit better now. There's our little ladybird there. I did go around the wings with the silver gel pen. I do like to do that with kind of insect wings. And I've added a little bit of glitter in there as well, which, um, yeah, we can kind of get that glittering a little bit. There's not very much, but it is there glittering. And those um, stick on crystals there twinkling in the flowers. I went around the outside of these flowers with the white gel pen just to make them look a little bit delicate. A little blossoms there. Yeah, it was super fun doing all the, the light effects with these lanterns. Look at that turtle or tortoise. I'm not exactly sure which he is. Tortoise, I think. I wasn't exactly sure what colour these uh, branches or trees were um, that would come up from the shell. So I started as a tree doing a brown kind of trunk and it kind of melts into the green vines because it does turn from this thick trunk into vines. So hopefully that works to give that effect. And there's our girl there. She has got the 
the washi tape, the same washi tape I used in our garden lady book. She's got that as a dress there. And the honeycomb effect one is for the ruffles around her neck. As you can see, there's lots of teeny tiny details. This clump of leaves here, super detailed, quite hard to do. But yeah, there we go. It's another ladybug. And there's the details. I'll come back out now. There we go. There's the overview. Super, super happy with how that's turned out. I think it's turned out really, really nicely. I do love the gradient that's happening in the sky from the yellow to purple, which is quite hard to do. And that does bring me to the one bit. If I could pick one bit I wasn't totally happy with, it's, I'll probably have to come in really close again. It's here for her arm because I was using a kind of peachy colour to blend from the yellow to pink to purple and that peachy colour is around where her arm is so her arm doesn't really stand out as much as I would want it to there and that is about the only bit that I was really totally not 100% happy with back in focus hey. <laughs> I'm getting the hang of it but yeah all together really super happy with how that's turned out and I do look forward to coloring some more in the book but yeah I probably will use maybe alcohol markers or try some watercolor because I did use the the glue here the glitter glue and the page is not warped very much at all so so yeah that is the last one I managed to color this month and for my theme for next month, um, for this month I did pick bees as my theme and I couldn't really find many pictures with bees, although I did do my best adding bees into the pictures I was colouring. But for next month I've decided to give myself more of a broader theme, so I've gone for the theme of wings, which also could include bees, could include many kinds of bugs or butterflies bats even, even up to fairies or dragons even, um, depending on what picture I can find, anything with wings, even aeroplanes maybe if I can find one, although I doubt that very much. But yeah, anything with wings um, will be my theme for next month. And for anyone who's new, I do usually do pick a theme each month and that is not I'm going to colour exclusively things with wings next month. It's basically something I can fall back on. If there's nothing I really want to colour, if there's no whips I want to work on or anything like that, I will try and look for something with wings. It will help me choose a picture and not get too overwhelmed with all the colouring books that I do have at the moment, not being able to choose something to colour. Well, that's the thought anyway. Hopefully you've enjoyed looking back with me and all the pictures I've managed to colour during June of 2024. If you have enjoyed the video, please consider liking and subscribing. Take care, everyone, and I'll see you in future videos. Bye!